Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. In today's video, we are reviewing for the 2022 Texas Star Reading Test for fourth graders. Our concept is context clues. This is part one. Remember fourth graders, believe you can and you will. Do you need a math or reading tutor? We offer virtual one-on-one -on -one or group tutoring for second to eighth graders. The link will be in the description box so that parents can request a free 30-minute consultation. Our fourth grade math review workbook is available for purchase in our store, as well as the fourth grade reading review workbook. For pre-order, the book release will be January 28th, but you can grab yours today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you will be alerted to new videos. So let's talk about context clues, fourth graders. They are clues that help readers determine the meaning of unknown or new words within a story, passage, or text. Let's talk about the ways to find the meaning of no unknown words. You can look at the pictures. Also, you can look for words you know, helping words, read around the word, and break the word into parts. There are different types of context clues. One is the definition. The word is defined in the sentence or a sentence nearby. For example, our sentence says, the volunteer firefighters work to keep us safe, but they do not get paid. Based on the context clue for volunteer, the word means people who work but do not get paid for it. Another type of context clue is synonyms. These are other words that have similar meanings that are used in a sentence. Our sample sentence says, Zeke knew that the figurine was fragile when he felt all of the light and delicate pieces in his hand. So based on the context clues for fragile, we know that it is something that can be easily broken or damaged. How do we know that? Because it said that Zeke felt all of the light and delicate pieces in his hand. Next, we have antonyms. These are words that have opposite meanings that are used in the sentence. Our sample sentence says, Malik detests eating raw, raw tomatoes, but he really likes eating ketchup. Isn't that weird? So based on the context clues for de detest, it means to hate or think something is disgusting. The anonym is really likes is the opposite. Next, we have inference. This is the word's definition is not explained. You have to look for clues before and after the sentence. Our example is, you do not want to work with Crystal unless you want to hear her talk about herself all the time. She is so arrogant. Based on the context clues for arrogant, it is someone who brags about themselves and think they are more important than other people. Our next type of context clue is word parts. This is a clue in part of the unknown word. Our example says, I think you are overreacting. Okay, so we can break this word down, overreacting. We have over, reacting. So it is someone who reacts to something more than what they should. Why do we believe that? Because over we know is like over the top, okay? So over, over the top, reacting, they're doing a little too much, like Miss Jackson can do sometimes, okay? Our next type of context clue is an example. 
An example of the word is in the sentence or nearby sentences. Our sample sentence says, I really like the decor, including the fancy lights, beautiful paintings, and lovely furniture made the house look stunning. Based on the context clues for decor, it means the decorations and furniture in a house. How do we know that? Because it says, I really like the decor, comma, including the fancy lights, beautiful paintings, and lovely furniture. Our last type of context clue we're going to discuss is called a schema. It's background knowledge the reader may have. Our sample sentence says, a device such as a cell phone or tablet can be expensive. Based on the context clues for device, it means some type of electronic equipment. How do you know that? Well, think about if uh, a cell phone or a tablet, what is that? It's an electronic device. That is how you would figure out what the context clue is. So let's look at some examples. This is an excerpt from Confetti the Helpful Horse. Dogs have been used as guides for a long time. They are the most common type of guide animal. Many people who are blind rely on a dog to help with daily activities. Cheryl Spencer used to depend on a guard, guard dog, a guide dog named Delta to help her. When Delta became unable to work, Spencer learned that some people use miniature horses as guides. At first, Spencer thought that this idea was silly. But after learning more, she started looking for a guide horse. We are going to read the dictionary entry for the word common in order to answer our question, which is, which definition best matches the way common is used in paragraph one? All right, so let's look at the dictionary entries for the word common. It's an adjective, common is an adjective. So definition one says shared by people or groups. Definition two, regularly, regularly see or use. That was a tongue twister. Definition three, expected actions or behavior. And definition four, not having wealth or privilege. So based on what we just read in the story, we are looking for the definition that best matches the way common is used in paragraph one. So our hint is in paragraph one, and let's read it again. Dogs have been used as guides for a long time. They are the most common type of guide animal. Many people who are blind rely on a dog to help with daily activities. So in order for us to discover what the correct definition is for this use of common, let's look at how it's used in the sentence and also our dictionary entry. Does, would it have anything to do with shared by people or groups? No, I don't think so. What about regularly seen or used? Okay, so the one thing that I do want to say, because that could kind of go for common, but what did our question say? It wants us to use the best match, okay? It wants us to use the best match. So regularly seen or used could be it, possibly, but what we want to do is we want to go through all of our dictionary entries just to make sure that there's not something that may be a better definition for common, okay? But two is definitely in the running right now. Number three, expected be actions or behavior, possibly, or number four, not having wealth or privilege. Well, we know definitely not one or four because it has nothing to do with something being shared by people or groups or not having wealth or privilege because we're talking about 
dogs, okay? Being guides. Now, what we can do is, if you're not sure, substitute in the definition with the word of common just to see which one makes sense, okay? So we're gonna start first with definition two. Dogs have been used as guides for a long time. They are the most regularly seen or used type of guide animal. Okay, okay, that that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Now let's try definition three. Dogs have been used as guides for a long time. They are the most expected actions or behavior type of guide animal. Well, we know that that doesn't that really doesn't sound right, correct? So what is our correct answer? It is two that the word and the use of common in our paragraph, our definition is regularly seen or used. So dogs are regularly seen and used as guide animals for the blind, okay? And again, this is how we use context clues to discover what the correct answer was. Let's look at one more example. This is from an excerpt from Chewing Gum Man. In 1907, business was bad for many companies across the nation. In order to continue selling his gum, Wrigley had to work extra hard, think creatively, and take some risks. He took out a large personal loan to pay for advertising. If this idea had not worked, he would have lost everything. Wrigley believed that the public would buy his gum if it was something they thought about often. He wanted people to hear about his gum, read about it, see it, and taste it. His model for selling gum was tell them quick and tell them often. Once, Wrigley went so far as to mail gum to every listed address in the company in the country. Wow. More than a million people got to try Wrigley's gum for free. That's a lot of gum, y'all. So our question is, as it is used in paragraph six, the word risks refers to a breaks in a routine. B, suggestions from others. C, skills that are difficult to learn. Or D, actions that could lead to failure. So our hint is in paragraph six, okay? In 1907, business was bad for many companies across the nation. In order to continue selling his gum, Wrigley had to work extra hard think creatively and take some risks. He took out a large personal loan to pay for advertising. If this idea had not worked, he would, lose, he would have lost everything. Wrigley believed that the public would buy his gum if it was something they thought about often. Okay, so looking at the answer choices and let's walk through them, we read our paragraph again. In reading this, does breaks in a routine for A, that's answer choice A, breaks in a routine, does that seem like something that um, could refer to risk in this paragraph? Well, no, because we weren't talking about a routine that he had, okay? So B, suggestions from others. Well, in our paragraph, there was no one else that was mentioned talking to Wrigley, so he didn't receive a suggestion from anybody else, okay? C, skills that are difficult to learn. Um, no, there was no talk about a skill that he picked up. It was just talking about how hard he had to work uh, in order to sell his gum during a time when the business was bad for many companies in the nation. So let's look at the actions that could lead to failure. Now that is potentially the right 
answer choice. Why? Because we can use our context clues. Remember, one of the things that we say for context clues is we have to look if it, it's not immediately defined. We can look around in the beginning, um, before the word and after the word to see if it gives us a hint to what the meaning is and what I believe, why I believe D is the correct answer is it says in order to continue selling his gum, Wrigley had to work extra hard, think creatively and take some risks. Okay. How did he take the risk? He took out a large personal loan to pay for advertising. Now, if this idea had not worked, he would have lost everything. So actions that could lead to failure, that is why D is the correct answer because it's what risks in the paragraph, that's what it refers to. Wrigley having to take actions that if it didn't work and it says it, that he would have lost everything. Well, that's considered failure. And that is it for this um, review of context clues part one. Remember, if you need a math or reading tutor, we have a link in the description box so parents can sign up for a 30 minute free consultation. We have our math reading and fourth grade math reading and math workbooks that are available for purchase in our store. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. I will talk to you later.